Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode number 3 of NWA Chicago. It is as always a very exciting night with NWA Main Event Showcase here. Episode number 2 of Main Event Showcase, second ever show. So I'm very... This should be a pretty decent show. It's not going to be my best show, not going to lie. And I'll explain that later on, at, probably after the show. But without any further introdu introductions, let's get into it. In a pre-show bout that had terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat, El Hijo Del Rey Mysterio defeated Brian Pillman Jr. in 9.58 by pinfall. They have great chemistry and it showed in their performance. It was a 28E, Pillman got a 24, Mysterio got a 28, and Rey Mysterio, El Hijo Del Rey Mysterio, sustained a torn quad. So it looks like he's going to be out of action for a decent amount of time, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, we didn't really have a huge plan for him at the moment, so... Maybe he can come back even better. That sucks. Now let's start the main card. Yeah, so Christian Cage. I never told you guys, but Edge and Christian are actually my road agents. Christian Cage and Adam Copeland. Just because I love those two and all the other road agents wanted to retire, like Ricky Steamboat. I think Nikita Kolov, Nikita Volkov. I tried to hire him. He wanted to retire. So we just went with Edge and Christian because we can afford to pay him, and they're just two of my favorites. In a terrible match, JT Dunn defeated David Starr in 12.04 by submission to start the show. 24E. Um, we didn't get a bonus for, you know, working the crowd, which kind of sucks. 25 for Dunn and 22 for Starr. Decent match to start the show. Nothing to be super proud of, but not terrible. A graphic is shown announcing Ethan Page versus Sharkboy as tonight's main event, with the winner facing Nick Aldis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in two weeks on NWA Main Event Showcase. So that's a big announcement. Ethan Page takes on Sharkboy in the main event for the number one contendership. 23E minus. That could have gone a lot better. PD Williams and Scott Steiner enter the NWA arena. I did not spell enter correctly. And Scott Steiner says, If there's anything worse than rednecks and white trash, it's you damn Chicagoans. You people make me sick. Everyone is, or Scott Steiner makes like a gagging noise. Everyone's booing him because it's Scott Steiner's antics. That's just how he does it. P.D. Williams says, Scotty, Scotty, cut them a break. There have to be crappy cities like Chicago for us to compare the greater cities to. And just like this city, the tag team division here in NWA Chicago is pretty crappy too. I don't see a single team worthy of a shot at these titles. And Steiner says, you can say that again, little Petey. So Billy Corgan, I suggest you go out there and get some more free agents to come here. Because we're not defending these titles until we get some actual competition in here. Come on, Petey. Let's get out of here. The less time I can spend in Chicago, the better. And then they leave. So a nice promo there from Scotty and Petey. 37D minus. Angle got the crowd hotter. They're not going to defend their NWA tag team titles until they see a legitimate contender. Very interesting to see what Billy Corgan will do about that. In a terrible match, Christina Von Erie defeated Mischief in 11-12 by pinfall with a double knee face breaker. 32E plus. 30 for Von Erie and 29 for Mischief. And match got the crowd hotter. Happy with that. The camera pans to Matt Stryker on commentary. And he says, Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed that our owner, Billy Corgan, just made a huge match for next week. Tanil Dashwood will take on Jazz for the right to be the number one contender to Kaylee Ray's NWA World Women's Championship. You don't want to miss that one, folks, so make sure you tune in next week for that incredible women's matchup. 36D minus. It's all about her storyline has advanced with the segment. Matt Stryker clearly enjoyed having the freedom to go off script and perform well. So we have a big women's match next week to determine a number one contender for the women's title. In about that had terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat, the Havana Pitbulls defeated the Von Erichs in 1053 when Rocky Romero defeated Ross Von Erich by a pinfall with a foreign devil. Uh, let's see, how are the ratings in this one? Upper 30s for the Havana Pitbulls, and the mid-upper 20s for the Von Erichs. 36D minus. I can live with that one. Newcomer Joe Hendry is standing in the ring with a microphone, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joe Hendry. Where I come from, I'm a local hero. I've been given an opportunity by Billy Corgan to compete for a contract with NWA Chicago. I will wrestle anyone Billy can send my way to earn this contract. So who will it be? Come on out. 23E minus, who will face Joe, Joe Hendry in his contract earning match? 
In an extremely short match, the big guy defeated Joe Hendry in 329 by pinfall with a silverback attack. So 18 for Joe Hendry, 64 for the big guy. And this was just a squash match for Ryback or the big guy and a chance to get Joe Hendry on TV. We have him on loan from ICW, I think. One of the uh, UK independent companies. So this was his one appearance, I think. Just uh, a little bit of intrigue for Joe Hendry. 50 D+. Plus. I wanted to see how he'd perform. He didn't perform too well, but he could be back in the future. We'll see about Joe Hendry. Charismatic dude. Flip Gordon makes his way into the NWA arena. And he says, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. I hope you're all having a good time and enjoying the show. And I bet I could make you enjoy it even more. Because I came out here to challenge Tyler Bate for his NWA World Television Championship. I came out here to win that title tonight. But it seems like Tyler isn't here tonight. Apparently he has better things to do than defend his title for you people. Tyler Bate doesn't care about you fans. Otherwise he'd be here. So Tyler, I'm making it my wish, my mission to win that NWA World Television Championship so that the fans can actually see their champion compete every week. So that way, they have someone they can actually cheer for. 24E for Flip Gordon on a promo here, calling out Tyler Bate for not being at the show. So one of the reasons that this show wouldn't be as great as it would is that I have a few guys who are not here tonight, including Tyler Bate. I had hoped on making Tyler Bate's television title open challenge a thing, I had planned on making the television title defended every single week on Main Event Showcase, but Tyler Bate is not here for the show. So unfortunately, I can't have him defend it, so Flip Gordon calls him out instead. In about that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling, fuck I thought this would be better, Ethan Page defeated Sharkboy in 2101 by pinfall with a Uranagi, 35E+, 36 for Ethan Page, 24 for Sharkboy, I thought that was going to be a better match. These are two of my main eventers. My main event scene is a little bit thin right now, especially considering I didn't have quite a few guys for the show. So that kind of sucks, but we did what we could with what we had. Ethan Page grabs a microphone after his match and says, Nick Aldis, you have something that belongs to me. You've traveled all over the world defending your NWA Heavyweight Championship, but you've never faced Ethan Page. Your title reign should have an asterisk next to it. It's overly inflated with wins over total nobodies. Ethan Page isn't a nobody, though. And after next week, two weeks, in two weeks, you're going to remember the name Ethan Page. Because in two weeks, Ethan Page ends your championship reign. 44D for Ethan Page to close out the show with a promo calling out Nick Aldis for the wrong week that his match will be in. It will be in two weeks, not next week. And so I think this show got, uh, I'm going to say a high D minus, maybe a low D. Yeah. 38D minus, kind of what I expected. Increased their popularity in 17 regions, which I'm happy with. Ross Von Eric was slightly overused. So now let's see what it got on television. Alright, so that episode of NWA Main Event Showcase was once again held in the NWA Arena in Chicago, Illinois, in front of 1,851 fans, and on TV it got a .02, which is 19,320 viewers. I believe that is definitely down from last week, and I think our attendance might actually be down too, but the show was a 38 D- minus overall. It wasn't as good as it could have been. We didn't have a ton of our star power on the show, but I have no doubts that it will only be up from here. Because we're going to figure out some contract situations, we're setting up our stories pretty good, and I think it's going to go a lot better than it has so far. There's only up to go from here. So I want to thank you guys for watching, I will see you guys in the next episode, episode number 4 of NWA Chicago, for another episode of NWA Main Event Showcase.